Howdy, y'all. Welcome to Framerate, the show where we rate frames, and today we're talking about a film I refuse to believe isn't palindromic, Possess Op. And here to do that with me, Michael Ooh. Swaim, is my usual co-host, Abe Epperson. Hey, Abe. Hey, it's me, Woo. Abe. I, li- I like that thought. I like that thought. <laughs> really? Thanks. Coming the, in. The coming trailer in made me thunk it. Oh. Because you know the letters, all, they slowly appear alien style. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I really thought there was going to be some kind of reflection theme, but there isn't. It's just a word. Hey, I, I'd say there is. <laughs> and here to discuss possess hop with us is uh, mm-hmm. someone who's truly <laughs> OP, uh, uh, the one of the biggest of all the beans, Mr. Tom Ryman. Hey, Tom, thanks for taking <laughs> Tom! the time. Hey, thanks, guys. I am the the possess operative. I guess I don't know. Mm-hmm. Sure. Mm-hmm. That really blew my mind for a second. You're Fuck like, is it. that is that real? Is is possess up a palindrome? Like a, <laughs> a train wreck in my brain. Uh, but yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for having me on to talk about this movie. Yeah, for sure. Man. Hell um, yeah. First and foremost, I think people know it as Brandon Cronenberg's what debut. I want to say, someone correct me. Shut my mouth with sweet cherry sure. pie if I'm wrong, but yeah, pretty sure that's it's, right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, he had some, he had shorts and then he had a movie antiviral and then oh, another okay. short and okay. then he had possessor. Okay. But great. Antiviral is like in 2012. So who gives a crap about Big that deal? I have shorts. I'm wearing them right now. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, but this is a, a tense little, I would call it bleak as hell thriller. Yes. Um, mm-hmm. from last year. And, Abe, did is there a shout out in order, or did, how do we arrive at? There's possessor? a shout out I in thought there order. Might be. Okay. Yep, it's called "Pick the Flick, People," mm-hmm. and you can do it right now by going to Patreon.com/smallbeans. And if you pay the proper amount of the tier, I forget what it is, you get to be like Zach Swartz, the Zach Attack, and choose the movie. That we discuss. They do have to pay in tiers, though. It's a tier it that has you pay to more be a tier with based tiers. Tier. Yeah, yeah, the tier exactly. based economy. <laughs> so be like Zach. Mm-hmm. Go and choose. There's a limited number we can do every month or two months. So go. Yeah. So go do that. That's literally it. control you, our behavior. And uh, you don't have to do this meta shit where you control our behavior such that we watch a film about behavioral control, but that's what Zach did. Mm-hmm. So let's dive in. Uh, I have a question. Yeah, to start please. Us. Start Is us this off. spooky Ratatouille? Um, oh, Tom, no. go for it. No. <laughs> and then I'll add, <laughs> no, no, it's not. No. It. <laughs> All right, let's move on. <laughs> I appreciate the joke though. But no, like Ratatouille, he was working for their mutual benefit. This is not that. That's what makes it spooky to me. But let's move that's on. True, that's true. Rather yeah. than, that's, that's true. That's true. That's true. Parasitic rather than symbiotic. There you go. Yeah. Uh, very like his father. It's a very misanthropic story. Like we're bags of meat, basically, punishing mm-hmm. each other with control. Well, it's literally about crimes of the future. Mm-hmm. <laughs> meat crimes. That's right. The first sequence, which is kind of memorable mm-hmm. and was talked about. Just get a woman who basically, and I believe she's just, uh, she just works at a hotel. Yeah. And then she stabs a guy like 900 times uh, for no goddamn reason. She stabs his ever loving <laughs> ass off. Plays with his blood, pulls out a gun, tries to commit suicide, can't do it. When the cops arrive, pulls the gun on the cops and they blow her away. And we're just like, what? And so it's like a very compelling first image if uh you don't get you don't get movies that necessarily have like the first like eight minutes is just like okay that's all right here we go it really is something i just wanted to jump on that and say the actual what is actually the first image or a couple of images is this woman kind of doing facial expressions to herself in the mirror and we we later understand that that is Voss, the main assassin character like trying to assert and solidify her control over this person's body but it's like it's this interesting like she's smiling but we can tell it's very painful and difficult so it's like very painfully putting on the mask of another person and then going and doing just this fucking balls crazy murder yeah um so it's just like it's like arresting from the very first image and then it yeah it just like michael said it becomes bleak as hell for the next two hours 
Yeah. Indeed. And although there is no legitimate format, we do try to at least tell people what the hell is going on. And I feel like we've omitted that. So Abe was Sometimes. referencing the, the fact that. Sometimes we yeah, do. but I bet there's people who haven't seen this. So the premise of the film, FYI, is that in the future, there is an organization that commits hits, essentially, right? Like there's a hitman named Voss who uh, commits the murders by puppeting puppeteering like uh using this technology by putting you know a, a visor on your head and getting injected with stuff and lights and flash and whatever but somehow mm. projecting your consciousness into that of another person uh and then controlling them possessor makes you know the title yeah. says it all and then eventually k- killing their target who is not the person they're controlling but then it's always a murder suicide because basically to close the loop and do the hit in such a way that it's quote unquote the perfect crime uh you make it look like a murder suicide right you kill whoever you wanted and then you mm-hmm. go crazy and kill yourself but what we see in the first sequence is it's not so easy to kill yourself or like the other person inside is fighting back is what we ultimately come to realize. It's getting harder and harder for Vaz to force their host to kill themselves because that's such a primal. You don't really want to do that organically. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. So, yeah, mm-hmm. um, Tom, a question yeah. we often lie about at the top is, I mean, I know you're not averse to the odd Cronenberg because I know you, but what was your first blush reaction to Possessor first time you saw it? it was this the first time you saw it? I don't think it was. Actually, no. We uh, Dave and I over on Gamefully did a We Just Watched for this movie I uh, know. whenever it came out. Yeah. Um, so, no, I actually really liked it. Uh, and I liked it, I think, even more the second time because parts that I identified as feeling a little slow the first watch didn't feel that way this time. Um, and I was more like, I already understood the themes of it and everything. So I was really, you know, a- along for the ride as it were, where we spend sort of a lot of time in the puppet guy's life, kind of seeing what mm-hmm. his day-to-day life is as boss is, you know, trying to get acclimated to him. And uh, in my first viewing, I thought that stuff was slow, but this time i found it like really important and compelling because it's like her, the whole movie is about like her empathy. Right. And at the end of the, the end of the film is the death of her empathy. So, like, Mm -hmm. you can see her struggling to be empathetic in this person's skin, which is really interesting um, the second time around. Uh, Whereas the first time around, it was a little like, I'm not sure exactly why we're spending this much time on it. But since, like, I now understand, like, what the movie's about and what the themes are, uh, it was a brisker watch this time. Um, And I also wasn't, like, white knuckling it because, like, anytime you go into... A Cronenberg movie, regardless of whether it's David or his son, like you're white knuckling it because you don't know what the fuck you're going to see. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but since is... I already knew it was going to happen, it wasn't like as tense <laughs> this time around. <clears throat> True. Yeah. And I think True. it, Abe and I both said we liked it the second time more too. And I think that's because it is minimal. I mean, what you see as slowness or feel as slowness maybe. Um, is that it's a very spare number of elements. Like it reminded me of Ex Machina Mm -hmm. in that way. And it feels almost humble in a way. Like he's not trying to go over the top with the great American novel or whatever. It's Mm -hmm. um, a very tight, high concept. Like once you watch it with the goggles on, I really recommend a second viewing because when you watch it knowing everything, um, the stuff is very satisfyingly clear and, and good, solid, Con- mm-hmm. like conceptual contrast like oh her job is literally to be other people and understand them and yet her empathy is slowly draining away it doesn't mean anything yeah. that like will change my life forever but that's nice that's good premise work i see what you did there that's very clever like yeah. everything is like that in this movie it maps out very well it's a really good tight sci-fi thriller it feels like reading a really good dark sci-fi short story mm-hmm yeah, exactly. Uh, almost to, I agree. I agree with both of you in that it's like, um, I think the reason we like it on the second time is that there is, I think, the white knuckling, like you're saying, with watching a Cronenberg or you know, like a you know, a director that you know that is like, okay, something could just absolutely floor me in, at any second, and it's going to come out of that and wall. It gets there, uh, <laughs> but. 
And so there's that element, but I also think that there's the element of this d doesn't go where you, you want it to go. It gives this huge high concept offer where you like almost immediately want to know more about the world and the technology. And this movie is not really that. Uh, this movie is more about the internal kind of struggle that it causes people. And like we talked about Voss's eventual like destruction of her own empathy. Um, and that, is not where what you'd expect out of a high concept offer like this. So you kind of like, once you know that that has happened, you can be a little bit along for the ride, uh, for that. And that's, uh, that's kind of cool. I think that that's, uh, we need more movies like that. Um, and as for the, uh, you know, like tight little sci-fi bit, uh, I actually think that my second time around, the one thing I didn't like as much is that like, sometimes I like the taut structure of like having it. So, so or I guess it's not structure, but the, like, I guess the formal consideration that every little thing is like a metaphor of the larger thing. Like it's puppets all the way down. Right. Mm -hmm. She can't get control of her own life. Jennifer, Jennifer Jason Lee is a pup is her own puppeteer. She's a puppet who turns nor normal, normal people into puppets. Uh, and like, so there's this, the theme this is concept, puppetry. Yep. <laughs> the, every image that we see, every TV show that people watch, you know, is a metaphor for the basic thing. Like it's screaming at you. And that's one thing that I don't know, as I age, I find that I, I don't need every single thing to be that, you know what I mean? It feels mm -hmm. almost like it was designed too perfectly and kind of makes it like a fairy tale to me. Well, this is the movie. By the way, I think this comes out in the right order, but either way, pair these statements together. When we covered or will cover Nope, I mentioned that I couldn't remember what movie it was, and it's this one that has an over-the-top stupid, we gotta stop this trope now, because they do it in Nope too. But in this movie, um, mm -hmm. Colin Tate, the final target, who becomes like the the main, you know, the principal arc of the last two acts, uh is at home watching a documentary about how they can use an implant to control a bowl by like or manipulating its, its brain directly. Yeah. And it's like, it's that's to me is as cheesy as the Simpsons used to make fun of where shit's just on the news says stuff uncannily relevant to whatever's going on in the plot. And right, it's like, exactly. turn it off, Lisa. It is off. Like to me, that is as bad as that. So definitely what you say resonates, but, um, it's a minor knock. I still, yeah, it's, it's still, minor. Because I, <clears throat> what's you should do that system. You should definitely do metaphor like all the way down. I think it well, makes a nice little taut thing. I right? realized on this watch that it you can zoom out a level also, right? Because I mean, in a, so it is puppets all the way down. There's a lot of interesting ways in which it's puppets. And I think one of the ways is a commentary upon, well, aren't we all puppets of our desires? Um, like, isn't even human existence, forget hit men trapped in each other's bodies, um, just being like a slave to your desire in a chain of motivations. You know, that's even how actors break roles down is what does the person want? What does the person want? Humans are just these little machines that are possessed by whatever they want or, or expectations of them or the role they're playing. And I think that's uncannily apt when you are Brandon Cronenberg making a, your first major film as if to say, I'm going into this with all these strings attached to me with expectations around my name, much like mm -hmm. a hitman puppet would. Like yeah. I'm coming in with my kill, but I know you guys have expectations. So it it works at every level, but it makes it very, it's like one resounding note, <laughs> you know? There is a, yeah. a little bit of less literal too, where it's like... um how you sort of codify yourself or like you, you the the uh, where you switch your coding up basically when you're talking to different groups of people different friend groups because we see like we see Voss like literally and it's it's because she doesn't have any empathy left but she's standing outside of her house literally rehearsing the conversation she's about to have with her uh estranged husband and and kid uh, and then she has to do the same thing to get into the character of Colin Tate. And then she has another mm -hmm. way where she's how she speaks to Jennifer Jason Lee, who's her, who's her handler. So it's like we're seeing the way that she juggles three different basically identities in a very sci fi concept. But that's 
not a sci-fi concept because we all do that, right? Like we all have different, slightly different identities depending on who we're around. Well, and woven all throughout is she seems to be, she can't escape the fact of her nature that she's fascinated by death and murder. Like, right. Like the question of what drives her is she does seem to have a genuine enjoyment of killing people. I think uh, that, I think that's interesting because I felt like that was her because they comment on it. They comment on well, the yeah, extreme that's violence. My interpretation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So my interpretation of it is like, that's like almost her like last gasp or like last ditch effort to try to retain some empathy, to try to retain some connection to the rest of humanity. It's like, she like sort of reaches down and in the first murder uh, after she just stabs that man's ass apart, uh, like kind of sinks her hand into his blood and keeps it there right. for a minute. Like it, it conveyed that like almost connection like, idea to me. And yeah, almost like she's reaching out to say like, is there anything here? And when it's not, there's nothing. Uh, she's just like, all right, I guess life is nothing. Then mm-hmm. this, uh, in a, there's this nihilistic bent that occurs for the rest of the movie. I, uh, I really do think like all, all, all of the Cronenberg family, it all kind of comes from technology though. Um, I don't think that that is some, this is something that, uh, Brandon Cronenberg is saying specifically is a human like humanity does this to itself and this is how humanity works. I disagree with that notion. I think that it actually comes from like, look at how Colin Tate works at a VR mine, which is like, I'm sure that's kind of real, but that's once again, uh, uh, you know, just a thing, just perfectly suited to create a critique, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Um, futuristic data mining. He identifies curtains and the whole concept is that there's like porn happening, people's lives are happening, and uh, and the the impulse is tell me what the curtains look like, tell me what color they are, so we can better sell to people exactly what they need. Um, and so it's a critique, really, of a of disassociative technology and the power of technology. I think that uh, what my second time viewing this it was less of a it was less of what if we had a technology like this and more of what is social media doing to us and what are things like social media where it's like we create a virtual avatar of oneself that we can essentially dress up however we want and be however we want different from our actual reality and that fisher is what creates these abominations in our own lives. So the fact that we're being marionetted is anti-human is I think what the statement is, but I'm feel free to disagree. No, no, I I think that's, I think that's, yeah, I hadn't thought about that, but you're right. Like it's, it's, it's not what if this technology existed, this technology does exist in a, in a form. This is just like a futuristic evolution of that tech. Here's what this technology will eventually be. And it's compounding, yeah. The same problem of disassociation, which we already see on Twitter, you know, it's the you know, on social media where it's exactly. it's it's like a trope now. It's like, oh, if you don't if it's like an anime avatar, or somebody who's not using their real picture as their avatar, they're just, you know, ghouls. So like these vile people who are just completely vile disconnected from humanity. Anonymity. Yeah. yeah. And I th- and I don't think that he lets us off the hook on that. I think he d- it's not like he's saying humanity, you're at fault here. Uh, like he, he absolutely is saying you are doing this to yourselves, but he's saying like, if we took this away, do you see how we wouldn't have this problem? I guess is kind of the way, uh, it would, it should be posited. Hmm. I'm in the minority, but I, I kind of like the other interpretation. I do think in a way there's evidence backing that it's a sociopath sort of coming to terms with themselves. Um, like that, I, that's what I get out of the, like, I think a really move rather than rat a spooky, I would call it <laughs> mm-hmm. spooky, uh, everything, everywhere, all at scare. Uh, cause uh, that's Batatouille. Like, sorry. Batatouille, yeah. Batatouille. Ratabooey. Uh, <laughs> because, uh, everything everywhere is like, like they're both about, literally being other people and being connected in a web of existence where you can become each other and see through each other's eyes and everything everywhere is like 
and that's beautiful and that gives me hope and this is like um it's uh the purpose of our protagonist is to sever and stifle those connections and reduce them to their base elements until they're nothing uh and i think we get that from the fact that she like i'm wondering in your guys interpretation what drives her to keep taking hits because she's obviously driven even girder's like at some points you don't have to keep doing this and she's like yes i want jobs i li- i got to do this job um and obviously chooses it over michael and ira at the end um and then the big tip off for me is the fact that when they go through the sequence where she gets reoriented using objects that she's familiar with, in the beginning, she does the monologue about the butterfly and says, I, well, yeah. I feel still feel guilty about it. In the end, she does the identical monologue, but she doesn't say I feel guilty anymore. Um, exactly. So to me, that's like paint by numbers clear of her empathy was drained away. She is the butterfly. She's pinioned in a cage. It's puppets all the way down. Uh, Look at how mirrors and glass are used in this movie. It's You mentioned Ex Machina, and you're absolutely spot on with that. Because, obviously, mirrors and glass, reflection versus see-through, right? Uh, mm-hmm. It operates the same way in that movie, where there's almost no difference between glass and mirrors. So it's the disassociation of self by adding another element. Um, to me, if we were to... I guess if we were to really be looking at a sociopath and it's just like look at humanity look at like what you've done it would just be mirrors but we almost always take a mirror in this movie and turn it into oh it's a window it's not actually a mirror it's a window Uh, it happens several times in the movie and i think that that is his commentary on the fact that we disassociate ourselves with other things as a like with with an with a pane of glass in the simplest uh, metaphorical case as opposed to just look at me right and then i have to look at myself so do you think voss is an everyman like without tech she wouldn't do this job what drives her to do the job in that interpretation is my big <clears throat> question yeah that's a great actually that's the best question because i, I think, think that she's been doing it for so long and she's like the special she's the special one i think it's her only it's the only time she feels connection and it's because she's having to share kind of a consciousness Mm. yeah so i think that she's she's chasing that empathy which is why she keeps doing it yeah which ironically she's losing it each time and then it's just the tragedy of her not get getting the opposite at the end then right Right. In addition, there I like- is a fa- familial kind of bond yeah. that occurs, even though it's very, uh, I don't know, stoic. But there's a familial bond that becomes comes with her and Gerda, right? Like, she she's chosen. Uh, she's like, I just want you to know that you're the one who's to replace me. I can't do go through the machine anymore. You're going to become the star pupil. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that there's some element to that. I think that if we're all puppets to be called you're the star of the show is very alluring uh, and it, it causes you do, to do a lot of terrible things. But I think that these are mincing words as well. I do think that there is a very good interpretation of her as, as Voss, as just someone who kind of gets off on it. And I mean, at the end of the day, she is a contract killer. I just mm-hmm. don't think that it, you take it. If there was another person in the room, a second or third po- contract killer, we don't really yeah. know. We don't compare because her we're never to anyone shown. else. Who does we don't the compare. Job, yeah. yeah. Maybe she's the only one. It doesn't seem like she's the only one because it seems like there's a whole like protocol that occurs. Well, we mean Bob like, or who, right? Isn't that his name? The technician. There's other agents, yeah. but they're technicians. They don't have the same like they you're Eddie. an assassin. Eddie. Yeah. Eddie, thank you. Yeah. And, and then, of course, um, uh, Gerda herself is piloting right. someone Go, at the end at the end yeah is uh to clean up the mess most likely the, the kid right yeah yeah because that kid becomes a full-on terminator for mm-hmm. a second yeah. right i and that's I, something i want to know and well, that's the go. choice that's the moment of choice in either interpretation well that's what i think is the interesting gray area note they leave on right because they've established very thoroughly that there's a lot of bleed through it's a kind of perfect maneuver. It's very clean. And and they've established that Gerder has put in her heads and Voss's head, you need to cut off your connection with Michael and Ira yep. to be the perfect killer. You aren't yet. They're, they're yeah. a complication. And I even got the implication that we don't know if 
if her feelings for them are bleed through from her previous job or not, or I don't know how they came into her life. But regardless, um, I think intentionally at the moment that Colin Tate's body shoots Ira to death, you don't know who's which psyche is operating the body or if they know that girders in there or if they just think they're killing ira and they scream do it do it they're just they just drag you down right before they do it um Mm -hmm. so it's like this true and i love what i really love is the previous setup of that scene is the fact that colin who's just felt himself do all this horrible shit like try to kill sean bean but he couldn't even take out a sean bean um he Mm -hmm. Statistically, uh, the easiest actor, the to, kill. Easiest the easiest actor to eliminate from the film. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Um, yeah. He goes to his mistress's house. And what I love is after this crazy experience where he wasn't in control of his body, his brain assumes that he was and starts trying to make. He goes, I did it because he attacked me. I did it so we could be together. And it's that that thing, right, where your brain will do stuff and then justify it after the fact regardless. Mm -hmm. So with that as the context, I just love how many monkey wrenches are thrown in right before the climax to the point where uh, Voss could justify to herself, I didn't kill my kid. Uh, Tate did or Girder did or, you know. Or any number of reasons. Any number of ways to justify it are available to her. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um I so I know it's uh it's funny because I think there's a, a different podcast that we recently talked about like the machinations of like the specifics of the technology are kind of useless like just kind of go along for the ride as long as they're hitting most of their stride mm-hmm. you know it's pretty good uh, and that's usually what I think this one I think goes a little too far for me because if we're to believe that all these people who have been under the influence of the technology are now operatives like the kid if if that interpretation is true uh i have so many questions about the team that takes people out of their lives does invasive skull surgery on them to embed an implant and then seamlessly places them back in their lives with no trace like that to me like that almost makes the entire technology not right like, in true Cronenberg fashion. It, it yeah. involves body horror. Like it's not like they beam your soul into the other person. No, they kidnap like that person. <laughs> worm wire in your skull. They yeah. make a computer out of both, uh, like out of Voss, the driver, and the 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 car. You know, right. like they have to put in the technology because it's not it's Wi Fi. It's not like magic. So that means that, and we see it and they kind of yada yada over it when we uh, look at Colin because Colin is like just magically in bed and then we're like, oh, Colin's uh, Voss now. And it's like, okay, so when did he arrive? He got in bed with his, did he get in, did she get in bed? Like did Voss get in bed with his girlfriend? Mm -hmm. Like with like how are we like what i want to know what that moment was was there a team of people who carried her in with a stretcher like how did it work uh and that kind of suspended my disbelief well and then especially when the climax is girder organically like discovering oh shit i know where she's gonna go she's gonna go to michael's place i know how we can head her off at the pass i'll be that kid um, what crack team of guys swooped in swooped and quickly in, in that like six hour interchange? Yeah, yeah found a uh, time where they could kidnap that kid with no one being the wiser and do some quick brain surgery and then redeposit him back into his life. I mean, that well, kid that kid seemed pretty easy to kidnap. <laughs> That's true. Was like, that he, was, he was real open to talking to strangers. <laughs> yeah. So, right. There is a different interpretation in the movie, I think, where there, uh, where uh, Gerda didn't enter the kid at all. It was um, the kid is the kid is just acting normally, like trying to protect his papa, and it's just weird because that's. But doesn't the kid say pull me kid out? Kid says pull me out. Really? Mm-hmm. At the I end, I believe that. so. Yep. I okay okay. I always I my initial view because I thought of that this time. Without even hearing mm-hmm. that sentence, I guess I, a terrible watcher. But the first time I watched it, I thought when we saw Gerder get out of the machine, that was because Gerder went hijacked, uh, hijacked uh, Voss, uh, hijacked Colin to kill Eddie and all do all that stuff. Because otherwise, how do we account for that 
to occur. You know, oh, because like Tate Voss that, can't even remember. I think because that that Tate happens just during, murdered Eddie. I think so because that happens and his uh, he, and his girlfriend or his, oh, yeah, no his girlfriend. Voss shoots the lover in the shower. Like they 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 like do it like a flash where it's du- you see oh, okay. it's yeah, Voss yeah, yeah. standing there holding right. the gun. That's right. So they they that whole sequence where Eddie's like deprogramming her or whatever it's that creepy scene where she's laying on the bed and like it's flashing in and out of reality and then into her subconscious and in her subconscious you can see tate walking into the room and he comes over to the bed and starts strangling her and then he pulls her face off and wears it like a mask and goes mm-hmm. through her memories yeah, yeah, yeah. and he crumples um, her head like an egg that's, like a paper to me, bag <laughs> that's it it becomes folding on itself so like it's intentionally kind of ambiguous in that yeah way. so i i think it's either what? i think it's either Tate kills Eddie intentionally or they kill Eddie in like a dissociative state because they're fighting with each other and it's, exactly. you know, and it's just like yeah. an, expl- an outward explosion of violence. That was my initial response. Okay. So maybe, maybe the kid is in, I always interpreted that statement as not the kid saying it, but as Voss saying it, but that's just uh, that's maybe, neither here maybe. Neither. Yeah. I don't know a lot of uh, as as it goes along at the end like another movie which actually re- this reminds me a lot of the idea of a woman as a cog in a brutal and like terrifying system along with like oh, interstitial the black void photography sequence makes me really think of under the skin um, I was gonna bring up under the skin it's also the same amount of spare and it feels obscure, but if you watch it a couple times, you're like, no, it totally makes sense. It's pretty transparent, yeah. actually. And you think it's ambiguous, and you're like, yeah, there's multiple interpretations, and then you watch it more and but more, they're and all you clear. go, ah, they're yeah. actually, no, it's kind of one this this one, the yeah. more you think about it. So that's, uh, that's cool. That's cool. Yeah, highly recommend Under the Skin. I think we covered that with Brooks, We right? definitely covered yeah. that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm surprised that there's no, I mean, there's a scene where Colin like flips out. Uh, we get that kind of like we're the, the sequence we're talking about, but I'm surprised that there's no, like he kind of keeps away from us. And I'm talking about Brandon Cronenberg, this moment of the absolute abject horror that would be, I was being controlled by someone else and I did horrible things and I'm now in control of my body. And I realize that we do see Khan kind of like figuring it out, but we don't see him absolutely like racked in guilt. Uh, he brings up the cat brain parasites. Screaming. Uh, yeah. So he he's like flirting with the idea for sure. But he's also obviously flirting with the idea of maybe I'm crazy. Maybe I just did that stuff and yeah. I'm crazy. Yeah. It's definitely what you were talking about earlier where it's about the internalization immediately sets in instead of like, I kind of just wanted him to be like, I just wanted to feel with him. Oh, the absolute, like the horrible rape that has happened. Uh, I can just react to that and just, you know, be able to feel that and have people see how horrible it was by having the actor do that. Um, It's interesting that we, uh, we don't see that scene because that's almost, it's almost like a gimme. I don't know. That's like a, a thing that like almost most movies. But that's another thing that makes it milk. Cronenbergian and bleak is that it's right. drained of some of the passion, right? He doesn't take the exactly. big juicy passion scenes. He shows you the he aftermath them. of stuff. I mean, other than obviously a few key murders, because you got to get those on screen murders in. Uh, <laughs> it's rare. I think he's very judicious with human emotion in a way that is very impactful. Like when Colin finally does blow up at uh, Sean Bean and is like i'm a fucking giant i'm a fucking giant yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah. it uh stands out as totally texturally different than the rest of the movie it is not a melodrama with people screaming at you it's no marriage story right it pulls its it like <laughs> picks its battles yes yes it doesn't it doesn't do it all <laughs> um you know there's a cool second movie and there's a hint uh he hinted at in some um uh, in, in some interviews this came out in 2020 and it mm-hmm. came out like literally like the month that the pandemic became like world news mm. or at least really started to shake America uh, and so it really kind of you know obviously had a short half-life because of that 
but it, there was an interview where he talked about how there isn't like this is not a finished tale um and i think that there could be a really cool second like movie out of this because some detective should figure this murder chain out mm-hmm. like there are leads everywhere like why did colin go to michael's uh the trail of clues could stack up right like it's a highly highly strange uh kind of situation sean bean is technically still alive at any time you could just say mm-hmm. like, you remember some shit uh and says that that's a weird thing to say right before you're about to murder someone um and so you could kind of figure that out and i think that that would be almost a a cool just as cool of a a movie is to have you know what's happened and you're just watching a detective kind of piece it together and realize the horror but i guess maybe that's not um necessarily the correct i could take it or leave it it would be good if it was good for sure you know what i mean (laughs) i well yeah i also think it would make sense for a movie that i mean you see in the visuals over and over there's something also about iterization and fractalization like the i don't know if it's just supposed to be a tonal like dreary thing but right the housing complex they live in is shot to look very especially like just a series of squares next to each other like reduced to block 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 um and there's a big it's it's kind of a striking it makes me wonder if brandon cronenberg is going to stick with this visual because there are like aside from the the big loud choices like the head crushing and the wearing the skin as a mask. I just found that it was also a a fairly, it's fairly transparent, but not completely transparent. There was a visual style and panache to this and I enjoyed it. Although it did bum me out. It made me very sad because even on a visual level, it seems to be saying like, People are just different for iterations of each other. Everything is nothing. It I, I felt that this film like reeked of nihilism. Even if the ultimate message is not nihilistic, the texture of nihilism makes up the fabric of its reality. Does that make sense? Everything no, seems depressing. hollow and uh, yeah, everyone I, vapes. Everyone vapes yeah, out of huge that cartridges. Is, that is total nihilism. No, <laughs> I I agree with that, but I don't feel like he's presenting the world as nihilistic. I think that's where the tragedy is, right? The tragedy is that Voss herself is nihilistic. And so she's missing out basically, you know, like it's, she's right. losing her connection with the rest of humanity in the world, which is a tragedy. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. just saying yeah. he's adept at making me feel that intensely. Not that the story is saying ultimately nihilism wins or not, but uh, uh, he is a, adept at creating a world that f- it feels bad to be in. And that was obviously <laughs> intentional. So good on you. I would say, and I know I'm just comparing them because they came out around the same time, which I shouldn't necessarily do, but crimes of the future almost felt, uh, I really enjoyed crimes of the future and I love living in that world, but it felt like a dark twisted fantasy. Uh, and this feels like a more believable near future that I'm like, man, things took a poor turn in this future. This is a really sad future. Reminded me of 1984 and things, I guess, because Gerder, I mean, you can also call Gerder the possessor, right? Controlling the entire life path of her agents and whatever. Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's puppets all the I, way down. <laughs> visually, we never, we don't really talk about visual taste on these. As the much. Time, yeah. As much because I don't think it's, I don't think it's great criticism but just because we're mentioning come on doctor it, movie people love it like the, spec- did you get I anything from the cross like highlights it. the crosses I'm in the eyes so good i'm so glad you noticed <laughs> that makes me so happy <laughs> i was gonna mention it i don't know what they mean i just noticed that in their eyes in the shape of a, are in the shape of cross mm-hmm. it happens to both puppets I think it means that they're fully integrated into being a marionette, but I'm not sure why it's a cross. I think it's more of a mark, but it could have religious uh, implications. Or just it's not ex- in the eyes like you're dead. It's X's in the eyes like you're dead. Yeah, exactly. But it's definitely in moments where they are fully marionetted and it's like, let's go. Uh, mm. And I think that that's a cool little effect. It, there are visual things. I mentioned the uh, the the mirrors and the, and the, and the windows kind of thing. That's very hard to accomplish. So there's a lot of visual imagery and iconic like icons happening in this Mm -hmm. that are very smart and very well thought out. One of my gripes about the visual 
uh, aspect of this movie is that it really does have like Netflix drama face. Like it's like Ozark <laughs> or like, I don't know, the haunted Definitely hill. Definitely the color ha- correction hill. suite. Yeah. Yeah. The, it's the color correction and just the, the light kind of like very low saturation, but also low contrast. Like, like the, the darker parts of frame are not allowed to be dark. They're very gray and stuff like that. And I just feel like we're kind of reaching the end of that, which is nice. Uh, I think, you know, culturally we're not doing it as much. It's still, it's still alive and kicking. I just noticed it in midnight mass, which is not too long ago where I was like, this is a horror thing. And the blacks are not black. Like it's not dark when it's dark. It should be darker. It's (laughs) that that Netflix sheen. Yeah. It's that Netflix sheen, but it's not exclusive to Netflix. It's just something we've noticed with a lot of their stuff. Even like true detective has that, you know, um, and I think what it's trying to do is I actually think it's more in the side of what Michael was arguing in that it does kind of attribute to a bleakness of the world. I would in the end, I think, agree with uh, agree with Tom in that like they Cronenberg does show us some stuff here, especially with her real life, like with Michael, her estranged husband and her son, there is goodness there. And we have scenes where it's like, they could be a family. They could be a happy family. Um, so it's definitely trying to do that. But like with the, with the visual kind of signaling that's being done, you don't want to live here. It, to me, it, it feels like it, it would be a drab, horrible place to live. Yeah. Or, or, you know, a- or whether reality is that is literally that or not, that's the existence Voss is having and that we are having through her for sure. Right. It's yeah. not fun mm-hmm. to be in there. Do you find it fun to be in David Cronenberg films? Because I actually do. It feels like a fun They're house. They're more fantastical. Spooky. Yeah. 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 I agree. Uh, I, I think that set- most of his films uh, are not afraid of color and they're not afraid of um, kind of going all the way yeah. with it. And because that, it, yeah, you're right. It does feel kind of like a haunted house more because it feels, it identifies uh, like a color palette and it identifies like a, a, a like, I guess what you're kind of, we're, we're both talking about kind of like a sheen to the world um and it it lives in it and it says this is what my movie is like this only because i think it came out in t- like 2020 i still haven't seen crimes uh so mm. i can't really talk about that yet uh but this coming out in 2020 uh it i think it's just the studios are like you gotta look like this maybe mm-hmm. maybe i don't know yeah don't i'm know definitely gonna give a hold on Brandon license to like I'm not going to assume this is the type of movie he'll always make yet it's far too early for that but right, right. Um, it'll be interesting to see I don't know strikes me as like a moon I'm very excited to see the next one and or like upgrade reminded me of upgrade as well if you've seen that oh great yeah, type, yeah. Little yeah. Sci-fi jam. I love upgrade yeah um, this movie actually in terms of David Cronenberg this movie actually reminded me of dead ringers if that makes sense oh yeah Ain't God, seen I it. totally f- fucking forgot about Dead Ring. It's mostly thematically, but yeah. What like, year was that? 88. Jeez. Yeah. No, mm-hmm. no, no. It's great. Oh, no, no. I saw that. The gynecologist Jeremy Irons one. Yeah, I watched that because mm-hmm. you guys covered it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's a uh, weird it's fucking movie. Yeah. Oof, fucking man. Pretty sad. Yeah. Fucking Jeremy yeah. Irons. Sad it's- stuff. <laughs> pretty uh, also about pretty puppets. upsetting film yeah in the sense that they stick their hands up people and you know. well and yeah. then they're they they're <laughs> swat they're constantly trading identities and they sort of lose their identities into each other it's you mm-hmm. know no i meant the hands to... in the coochie thing <laughs> oh yeah yeah sure <laughs> the fact yeah, that they're gynecologists. <laughs> gynecologists. yeah that's uh that happens and then you operate them like a puppet yeah so that, it's it exactly happens. the same movie yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. that's right mm-hmm. that's right I think it's um we're doing it's good also work funny. Here. We're doing great work here. It's funny to me that there's a whole preparation sequence to this like protocol. I see why by the end because you do have to like be inside. You have to she be- acts, she's establishing the ki- that's another thing where you're like 
this technology seems like it's more trouble than it's worth. She lives yep. as Colin Tate for three days and establishes days. him as, um, you know, like but psychologically you're not unstable. To. You're not supposed to. She just has to because of the situations of the movie. Right. To me, if it was protocol for like, if you had this technology, you would have an ability to just deject someone and it's fine to me that you can't have this technology unless you had that. Because they're like, what's the narrative? You know, like at, like in the preparation. Now you always get in trouble. See the cell and any other yeah. movie where you go in someone's consciousness, Inception, right. etc. Yeah. Yep, yep. You can't just eject. Uh, and it's like we need to know the internal politics and the nuance of the family. Who's fucking who? <laughs> I know that that's because it's going to make juicy scenes later, and that what that's what makes the movie is like the you know intrigue of just inner politics. But you can literally hijack humans and make them shoot other humans i don't know if you need to know about people's like secret lives you just need to know okay so he has like an accent because then you can be like i'm sick i can't go to work <laughs> yeah but oh, okay. she rear windows him and like practices his cadence and shit like a method I, actor yeah i thought that was a really cool sequence. i love that like, scene just, but i agree with yeah. you that if you really just want to establish that he's crazy exactly and, here's the other thing do they shoot themselves in the head such that it obliterates the control chip? Because wouldn't an autopsy reveal? Reveal? Or, or yeah. do they have to break in, steal the body, do brain surgery on it again, and then leave the body well, in I'm the coroner's office? I'm telling you, this crack team <laughs> yeah. is the top, top of the top. Okay, so the sequel is just about the people that move the bodies in and out and in and out and do it the crawls, brain surgery. It, it, it crawls out of your skull like the little CGI reptile in the Mortal Kombat <laughs> yeah. movie. It's like a little, it's like a little rat. It's I, a little rat that pops out. Yeah, and runs a little rat in the chef's hat. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. No, I think, <laughs> I think the, I mean, obviously the logistical questions are very, very silly when you think about them. But I think, like at least thematically, the idea, or not even really thematically, um, the idea that she is spending more time than is necessary in this guy is just part of her reaching for connection right like she wants exactly. to live yeah. somebody else's life who has people that care about him and he's like a more emotional he's not emotionally stunted like she is so she just she wants to live in his life for as long as she can because her own life is just she's just adrift and do you think i agree the yeah. excruciating sean bean torture with the fire poker then is uh is that in a weird way an attempt at <gasps> connect like trying to empathize with Colin's true hatred for this man? Because we do see that Parse treats him like a piece of shit. Yeah. Like we understand the murder. And yeah, and Parse himself is a piece of shit. <laughs> right. Yeah. I think yeah, you're supposed to I uh, She has emotions by blended. living other people's emotions. I think yeah, so, I, yeah. Yeah. That's kind of And cool. I think that that's one of the reasons why when the murders happen and she like touches the blood in the first sequence. It's like, this is not something that this person would do. Mm -hmm. They're not a, they're not a killer. But she's living in the moment. So, she's like, I have the, I'm having a feeling. I like, can I have this feeling? Is this, <laughs> feel, is this my feeling? Is this that their feeling? So because they're not a murderer and they have no like drive to put their hand in blood, they get nothing from that interaction. In fact, they probably in the back seat horrified mm -hmm. um and that's probably off-putting but i bet yeah i like the idea i like the thought that the if someone kind of secretly wants to do this thing they're kind of gonna dip into it which is you know so not surprising when we get the ending that we do where she kills her family you know mm -hmm. and literally cuts off i think his wedding ring finger I mm -hmm. do think mm -hmm. everything sort of works on that level. Like as Gerder is explaining how they're not responsible for the deaths really in the grand scheme of things, she's cleaning her hands with hand sanitizer. <laughs> it's like I do. The movie is working with very, very clear basic elements, but I am, I am not opposed to low hanging fruit when it comes to visual symbolism because no, it doesn't need to be obscure. Right. Uh, yeah. For the most part, I enjoy it that I, I like yeah. looking at a postcard and understanding what it means. You have to go pretty far before it becomes like political cartoon territory. <laughs> yeah. I think it's done <laughs> judiciously here. I'm excited to see what what he comes up with next, especially because, as Tom said, it takes the shape of a sci fi short story. And that's my favorite mm -hmm. shit anyway. In that in that vein, I want to know why the soundtrack to this movie mm -hmm. isn't in sync's album. No strings attached. <laughs> 
That you made me wonder if the cross in the eyes is the cross of a marionette. I know. With the strings that coming down. That sounds cool, doesn't it? Bye, I don't bye, know. bye. Um, bye, bye, bye. Also wanted to know. Oh, yeah. Tom, you ever seen that upstream color, Tom? You see that? No. No, I haven't seen, seen that. seen it, Tom? I haven't uh, seen it. I haven't, I haven't heard about this. If you really want to see a slow paced, <laughs> I mean, more slow paced than this tale about Good like Lord. worms that control your behavior in your brain that's right i really liked upstream color but it is it is like this at one level f- of fractalization further obscure where i i had to read a guide at you know like r slash a walkthrough blah blah yeah. r, r slash upstream color explained but when i, I did facts. understand it i was like oh that is very clever <laughs> too clever for me to understand without this guide but interesting stuff yeah, it's uh, it's by the guy who made primer yeah so makes sense it's, it's that it's that what do you yeah. guys think about is there i don't know i think there's something about uh, something larger about i mean of course this is why we are doing our multiverse uh uh series but i think this folds in there too there's something about empathy and connecting to other people in a literalized way that is all the rage right now and I wonder what it says about us as a culture or a place in culture right now. But I don't know. I feel like every, all, uh, so many of our movies now are about um, literally connecting your soul to another soul, you're connecting your consciousness, transposing your consciousness. I wonder if it portends some kind of shift from individualism to collectivism. I think it's uh, it, I mean, it's all of those things. And for obvious reasons, uh, you thinking that. But on top of everything, our technology is getting there right like our we, we can't you can't go inside a human but you can read their inner workings more than ever before you can stream eight hours of their life or what have people you. Yeah. are yeah exactly people are giving themselves up uh, a little bit more it's like that movie the circle uh <laughs> you know there's i just think that there's just a lot of that happening right now so obviously our literature would be uh, in kind re- reflect that i think you're absolutely right well, and let's think, hope it leads to good things, all this connectivity. Yeah. I don't know. But well, we don't according know. to Brandon Cronenberg. It's it's no. a dangerous <laughs> situation. Yeah, it's Tom, what were gonna, you gonna say? Oh, I was gonna say I think it it's it's also related to what Abe was talking about earlier, like dissociative technology and parasocial relationships, all that sort of, you know, online living and interaction is like um I think that's just on a lot of people's minds right now. So it's yeah, like, are we losing exactly. valuable, real connections by doing everything like a step removed or two steps removed? Um, yeah, that's all I was going to say. Ah, so maybe we're yeah. using stories to remind ourselves of what we need reminding of at this time in some way. The yeah, and also, you know, warning of stories warning of the Im- impending threat of. Well, this was this one would be. Yeah, this one is a bad Atui warning. But I, I was I'm <laughs> saying it's funny. It's actually the odd man out. Right. Usually a film about connection ends with connections. Nice. It's good. This one is like it's bad when connection is gone. And you're like, that's actually the same point. But it's the uh, it's the negative reinforcement way of telling that it's instead the, of the positive the reinforcement. Way. Yeah, it's the emo way. It's you the know? emo, yeah. It's not in sync. It's Backstreet Boys. But I do, God, what a punch when she kills her kid. <laughs> like, I definitely flash back to reading 1984 when Winston exactly. finally betrays everything he stands for. It's quite a ugh, gross feeling. Mm-hmm. I hate it when society implodes and chooses cruelty. Good thing that never happens in real life. Yeah, um, right. where, where would we be? <laughs> yeah. Tom, 2022. If, <laughs> if someone wanted to learn enough about your behavioral cycles that they could send a crack team of people in to abscond with you and implant a control unit in your brain, um, mm-hmm. where would they follow you on, uh, you know, connection destroying services like social media? Oh, wow. Well, you'd probably follow me on Twitter at start the machine. Uh, <laughs> Nice. But if you don't want to do that, you can head over to patreon.com slash gameplay unemployed where we, uh, Dave Bell and I run our own little, uh, podcast empire, uh, the, so the sister network to small beans. So check that out. Just four magnets. That's right. Including a previous episode on possessor. So you can compare and contrast. I think we did a pretty good job of trying to We're tackle pretty- it from a second viewing standpoint, but hopefully there wasn't too much redundancy there. 
Yeah. I forget. Oh, no, yeah, no, this is a good, solid convo, guys. So I, yeah. I always like Jack John about films with totally with, with and i think beans. this one bears yeah, up to a second watch and you can still get another hour out of it which is nice um so thanks zach for not picking something shallow for picking a yeah. quality film for us to talk about with our pals appreciate yeah. you man thank you zach yeah and thanks buddy thanks to all the listeners if you want to check out our exclusive podcasts like spiel boys and star trek the next futurama uh, head over to Gamefully Unemployed's Patreon, as mentioned, or hit up small be- uh, patreon.com slash smallbeans and collect them all. I think that's it. Abe, any special announcements? No. <laughs> just, <laughs> just smiling. Poor Abe. Just smiling. And <laughs> just smiling grinning. Away. Thinking just about grinning movies. Right. Thinking about movies as always. <laughs> Speaking of movies, you can watch movies with us if you are a Small Beans patron every Monday night at 6 p.m. Pacific on the Small Beans Discord channel. And that's what I was hoping Abe would say. But we're out. You don't control (laughs) me. This has been a Small Beans endeavor. We're a bunch of pals who make podcasts, sketches, music, web series, and movies. The Beans always have new ideas percolating. So make sure to check us out at patreon.com slash smallbeans. That's p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash smallbeans. Where you can browse all of our current and past content, see what we've got planned in the future, and learn how your support can help the Small Beans grow into huge giant monster beans if you enjoyed this content module please like rate subscribe or tell a friend about us we love you